Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm Bob Mendelson, and this is the Bob's Your Uncle podcast. Today we speak about legacies and religious discrimination. Stay tuned. Thanks for joining me for this Season 3, Episode 11 of the Bob's Your Uncle podcast. Of note, the opinions are strictly my own. I hope you enjoy Mendelssohn's Violin Concerto in E minor. It's one of my favorites. You can now find us and comment to us wherever you get your podcasts. Tell us what matters to you, what triggers your joy, what bothers you in the world. Let us know. We'll see where the Spirit leads us. Whether you're at home, online, on the road with me in your headset at the gym, or out for your evening constitutional, wherever you get your podcast, that's where we will be. Thanks for being with us these 18 minutes. Historical Marker of the Week. On this date in history, 21 February, in 1878, the first telephone directory was issued. And this date also celebrates International Mother Language Day and Sticky Bun Day. In 1965, Malcolm X, the religious and civil rights leader, was assassinated when he was speaking at the Audubon Ballroom in Manhattan. He was only 39 years old left behind his wife and six young daughters, including some twins that were born after his death. And that's the historical marker of the week. Happy Mardi Gras to you. Fat Tuesday, as some call it. It's Shrove or Shriven Tuesday for others. Time to eat pancakes to go wild before, ach, the holiness of Lent and Ash Wednesday. None of that was my tradition as I grew up an Orthodox Jew, but I always do love a good pancake. Today I want to talk to you about something that's been bothering me, oh, for a couple weeks, and it started on the 27th of January here in Australia. On that date, the Australian Law Reform Commission released a consultation paper about removing some religious exemptions from the Sex Discrimination Act. Uh, You could probably get lost in all that language. And while the paper formally noted the importance of religious freedom and parental rights, it then went on to recommend some severe restrictions to those rights. Specifically, three that I want to comment on. One, it stripped religious schools of the right to give preference in good faith to staff who share their own religious beliefs. Secondly, it restricted the ability for any religious school, Muslim, Jewish, Christian, to require the staff to model their religious beliefs in the area of gender and sexuality. And third, it restricts the ability for religious schools, again, Christian, Muslim, Jewish, on behalf of parents to address student behavior in the area of gender and sexuality, including where their behavior would undermine the school's religious ethos. Now, those proposals, if they were brought into practice, would seriously deter Jewish and Christian schools from operating in accordance with their faith, which in turn would undermine our rights and responsibilities as parents to provide our own children with a holistic education that matches our theology. 
Now these ALRC proposals, again, Australia Law Reform Commission proposals, are inconsistent with the terms of reference that the Labor federal government has already issued, which require the ALRC to ensure that all religious schools could continue to build a community of faith by giving preference in good faith to persons of the same religion as the educational institution in the selection of staff. So right now, there is uh, an invitation by the ALRC to hear from community members about the importance of these religious institutions. And I'm urging all the listeners here in Australia uh, to respond to that survey. I'll put the link to the ALRC survey in the notes of the podcast on whatever, whether you're listening on Spotify or you're listening on iTunes or Apple or whatever they're calling them now, or any of the, wherever you get your podcasts, the survey has to be completed in the next three days. It must be completed by 24 February. I apologize that I didn't get this to you earlier, but as Jewish and Christian and Muslim thinkers out there look at this, they know that their rights are being subverted and something's wrong with this ALRC hmm, propaganda machine. So we wanna make sure that you respond to that survey. I'll give you a link that you can just click on and it only is open until the 24th. It's partic- the ALRC is particularly interested to hear from those connected with religion and especially religious educational institutions like schools, colleges, unis, The survey is therefore aimed primarily at past and present students, as well as staff, parents, carers, and members of the wider school and college communities. However, all interested members of the public are able to and invited to complete the survey. It is a consultation tool. It's not intended to reflect a representative sample of the population. It will only form one source of information about the issues of the subject of this inquiry. It will also examine academic research, submissions to previous inquiries, consultation meetings, and submissions to the paper. I haven't been contacted by the ALRC. I would be a good person for them to consult. I'm happy to do that. Uh, Maybe someone will pass on to them this conversation. That would be good. And today I want to talk more about legacy. We talked about that when the Queen passed last year. But this from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 2. When there is a man who has labored with wisdom, knowledge, and skill, then he gives his legacy to one who has not labored with them. This too is vanity and a great evil. That's verse 21. The word legacy is the Hebrew word chelek. Chelko is the, the word his legacy in this verse. And this idea of your portion, your leftover, your what you want to say about you is pretty significant in this time and throughout our times. And I want to talk about this notion of moreshet, another Hebrew word for legacy or inheritance or what you pass on. I want to talk about it from the prophet Micah because it's very much possible that it was his hometown. He wrote about it in his prophecy as the Babylonians, sorry, as the Assyrians were coming to conquer his territory. Um, Not a very comfortable time. And at the beginning of his prophecy, Micah lists 12 cities, including number nine, Moreshet Gat, best known as his hometown. And it's included in this list of towns because it's in the path of the Assyrians who are coming in to invade and conquer South Judah and all his territory. Moreshet sounds very much like the Hebrew word for dowry, possession, or gift, and it probably suggests to the hearers 
the idea of a parting gift to a bride leaving her father's house for that of her new husband. You can see that in 1 Kings 9 and Deuteronomy 22. Micah says that the inhabitants of his hometown will be departing for captivity. Friends, the, the prophet is lamenting in chapter 1 and regularly in his prophecy. And I've been bothered lately, and maybe you have too, by the dissolution or the ruin that we see projecting onto the world in general and our world specifically. And maybe it's some of those comments that I earlier brought about the Australian law reform. And maybe it's because Mardi Gras has become this obscene celebration that not only happens in Brazil or in Amsterdam or in San Francisco, but globally. And it's been here in Sydney for the last several days, and it's going to be even several more days in a couple more weeks for this world pride that seems to be generating a lot of interest. We talked about it last week with the rainbow and stealing the sign of the covenant that God made with humanity. And I've just been bothered by it. That doesn't mean I'm bothered by people. People are people and people who are committed to certain things. God bless them. That's fine. But when they who are talking about something that I see and the Bible sees and history sees as abnormal and trying to impose that on the rest of us as if we are now abnormal, well, then I think we need to step back and look at the legacy, look at the chelek, look at the portion that we're leaving ourselves and our children and our children's children. I'm not so sure that a world of this magnitude of hysteria and where anyone who opposes this agenda is labeled homophobic or intolerant or a religious bigot, etc. Whatever you've been called, I've been called, and we're going to keep being called. I'm not sure that that normalcy that they're intending to impose on the planet is normal at all. A friend and I were talking today about the problems of the the uh, imposing of world pride on Sydney and on any other country, any other city where it might be happening just now. And we were commenting about the difference between nowadays and what took place back in the 60s when I was a young man. You see, back then it was simply a matter of one toke over the line and would smoke dope and, and celebrate and have free this and free that. And we didn't want to be told what to do. We didn't want the government telling us we had to go serve in the military, so we became uh, libertarians in that way and draft dodgers. We didn't like it when we were told that to be happy you had to have uh, one wife, 2.5 children, and a car in the suburbs. We wanted more liberty. We just didn't want people telling us what to do and how to be happy. We wanted to experience it on our own, and that was fine. They were imposing a normalcy that really historically is normal and to which many of us have grown accustomed and now re-entered. But when the aberrants of today's world start telling us that their world is normal and we are out of bounds in our abnormality, then the tables have turned. And I commented on this a couple of weeks ago with the book, The Myth of Normal by Dr. Gabor Mate, the Hungarian Jewish man who now lives and has lived for decades in Vancouver, British Columbia. Normalcy is something that the standard of the Bible gives us. And it's not because I'm hiding behind something that's crusty and rusty and dusty. It is because it has proven itself well. Listen to this, continuing in Ecclesiastes 2. For who can eat and who can have enjoyment without God? For to a person who is good in his sight, he has given wisdom and knowledge and joy, while to the sinner he has given the task of gathering and collecting, so that he may give to one who is good in God's sight. This too is vanity and striving after wind. There is appointed a time for everything and a time for every purpose under heaven. You might remember the song of the birds, and you might be singing along with me just now. 
Look, there's a time for everything, but there is a time for normalcy and not striving after the wind. The writer of Ecclesiastes, King Solomon, makes it clear that at the end, there's one way to survive and succeed. In chapter number 12, the very last two lines of the book of Ecclesiastes, we read this, the conclusion, when all has been heard is, fear God and keep his commandments, because this applies to every person. For God will bring every act to judgment, everything which is hidden, whether it is good, the Imra, and whether it is evil or not so good. That's where I'm thinking today. That's where my legacy, I want to leave that there. I want to park all my provision. I want to park my children and grandchildren. I want to pass on to them the goodness of God, the mercy of God, the kindness of God. I am over joyed when I think about his love and embrace and welcome to all people. His covenant is clear. Don't let an eight color rainbow rob you of the promises of God Almighty. And that's what I want to talk about today. What do you think? What do you think about all this? Write me on bobmendo at aol.com or comment or even video to me on Instagram or Twitter at Bob's Your Uncle PC. I'd love to know what you think about all this. Don't forget to post a review on iTunes or Spotify, wherever you're getting your podcasts. And also, don't forget to follow your uh, this podcast on your app. Thanks. Next Tuesday will be our next episode, and I am hoping to have a couple people in the queue to interview over the next couple weeks. So uh, rather than announce them and then disappoint you, uh, let me get to them, get their agreement, and then you'll have really some great guests as we look forward to the month of March. Thanks. Until then, from me, Bob Mendelssohn, when things seem bleak or uncertain, look up to God. He's in his heaven. And Bob's your uncle. Shalom from Sydney. <laughs>